Chris, what's up, buddy? Hi, Rich. Uh, you know, you know, thirty years ago, we, you know, we saw the Soviet Union collapse, and we thought Marx. Lower your volume a tiny oh, bit. Sorry. Really okay. Yeah. Or just, or just pull the mic away a bit. Yeah, we thought Marxism was dead, but it never went away on the college campuses. I mean, I think the only way we're going to save the West is to just see a mass exodus from the colleges. I mean, and as from what I hear, it's a problem everywhere, not just in America. Well, there, school is a big part of the problem, and and, and it just changes at different yeah. ages. Like you know, even in the daycare centers where where parents dump off their ki their kids, you know, which you're supposed to give a damn about between the ages of like three and four and a half, or two and four and a half in some cases. In some cases, it's like year and a half old toddlers are are getting dropped off at daycare centers because parents don't have the capacity to raise their own children. And then they put them in an elementary school system, which goes into a public high school system, which teaches them all the same woke nonsense, not a lot of life skills. Um, the main skills that, that, that guys need to learn, because I know a lot of my audiences, guys, you know, specifically is how to make bank, what women respond favorably to, you know, how to be masculine, like, you know, the standard big stuff, like on a balance of probabilities, there was a course that I took one time. Um, what was it on? It was on like stats or it was, wasn't even on st stats. It was on like, you know, if you were on a, a, a TTT, you know, like a TTC bus downtown and you were in the third car from the front, what would the percentage of people on the bus be that were straight, gay, trans, black, white, yellow, and gay, trans, and, and, and gay, black, and all? It's like, really, like, this is what we're trying to figure out. Like, this is a skill that I'm going to, you know, use in my lifetime. And this was when I was in school and then you go to university and here's the worst part i've got a lot of friends that have put their kids through university i know a guy specifically that put two daughters through university and they came out hating him they came out hating men one of them um became a journalist and gave a a talk he paid for the entire university program she gave a talk to a big campus of academics and spent the entire time praising mom and shitting on dad he was like, what the hell happened to my kids? Oh, I believe it. Yeah. Okay. So is it a problem? Yeah. What is the yeah. solution to that? Really guys, like you're not going to save the world by hoping that the school system changes. You can probably save your own kids yeah. and then release them on the world that exists when it exists by homeschooling them. That's my view. Yeah. anyway. Well, you know, Rich, we also have an issue. You know, my grandfather walked two miles to school each way as a first grader. Uphill. We are we are so coddling kids now, and we're not letting them take risks in the name of, you know, safety. I mean, you know, I can remember high I can remember high diving boards. Kids don't have high diving boards at public pools anymore, and all this that gets other into stuff. All the details, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's just nuts. I mean. I, I would you know, tell any kid to watch, you know, like a sitcom from the fifties or the sixties and you can see how kids used to live. You know, it wasn't this super protected existence that we have now. And then we wonder why they're so soft. Yep. It is what it is. All right, Chris, yeah. I'm going to let you go. Cause I got a Thanks. bunch of other people I want to get here too. Thanks man. So Nate's got this question here. Could having more individuals in school and higher education be beneficial for young men? So like one of the problems with all of this, Nate is you've, you've got a school system that, the problem is most guys are not men anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Rollo says that they're they're treated in the school system like defective girls. Even when I was in the school system, um, I can pretty much agree that I was schooled like a defective girl, right? If you if you can't sit still, there's something wrong with you, right? If you don't mm -hmm. color within the lines, there's something wrong with you. If you don't get straight A's like all the girls, there's something wrong with you, right? It, it can't possibly be the way the system structure, the way that it teaches, you know, kids, right? They shove them in these little boxes in classrooms all day with fake lighting and expect them to do well. So mm -hmm. what do you think about a solution to all that? Do you have um, something? I know generally, um, you can hear me, right? Loud and clear. Okay. So I know from my own personal experience, I did private school when I was younger and then transferred into public school. And now I'm doing university. So I know from my own experience, I had a lot more of a connection with my male professors mm -hmm. and just the environment they gave off and sort of how they were teaching things was more conducive to my and how I could um, excel in terms of my education. So mm -hmm. I know not a lot of men go into education. They don't see a lot of money in it generally. 
So I'm not sure if that is something that could be possible. Well, there's a lot less men teaching children today. And I'll tell you what, like the men that were teaching kids were teaching classes like shop. Like I remember shop was one of the classes that um, disappeared after I left the school system. And they would teach you basic skills like how to use a drill, how to use a bandsaw, how to, you know, um, I've got a, a, a cutting board. I don't have it anymore. I gave it to my parents when I was a kid, but they still have the cutting board that I made for them where I basically put together these different pieces of um, wood um, in different colors and from different sources. And it's still together to this day because that's what craftsmanship was. Like they taught you craftsmanship. They don't exist in the school system anymore. So again, it brings me back to, you know, the point of, well, what is the population doing, right? Like, what are we voting for? And it's like, you know, well, we're voting for policies that remove things like masculinity and useful skills like craftsmanship from the school system. So when they take the guys out of those conventional roles, like the ones that are teaching you shop skills, men start to disappear. Automotive was another um, class that one of the high schools had that a friend of mine transferred from our high school to another high school when we were kids because he wanted to you know, work with his hands. He wanted to work on, on cars. Those don't exist anymore. They don't have shop in high schools anymore where they teach boys how to... I mean, I bet if you were to ask... I mean, if you were to walk into a mall or some urban, you know, center and ask 20 men, do you know how to change a tire? I bet the vast majority of them don't own a car, have a driver's license and have never and would never know how to change a flat tire. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's the state of things. So, you know, when I bring you guys back to exhibit A, it's like I'm, I'm just saying, hey, this is where we're at right now. Right. This is what society wants to vote for is the empire of nothing. Yeah. Um, Because I know personally, even at my old high school, we did still have shop. We also had finances which was done primarily by men. So a lot of it was just teaching about spending as well as budgeting things out. So could it be possible to sort of work on standardizing the school system better so that we make sure that How? there are things like that? How do you do that? How do you change that when everybody votes for policies that don't support that? Is it possible to sort of like maybe do individual studies to see if it's like how viable it is for like students in terms of their success out of um, high school or even vocational schools, for example. Cause I know that close to me, there's a vocational school which teaches mostly like practical skills like electrician, plumbing, mm -hmm. automotive and all that stuff. So like, I think- so how, do I, you, so how do you get them to change that? Nobody seems to want to yeah. change that. I, I mean, like it's getting so bad in the school system now that schools are now firing teachers only when they get caught for trying to indoctrinate children with things like uh, Antifa and like radicalist, you know, sort of ideas, right? Like there was a teacher, I think it was in California, was it? Yeah. Recently that got canned only because he got caught doing it. Otherwise he would have still been in the system. There was, right? I know there was one in California. I think the other one was also in California. They, it was something else, they yeah. go in, you know, they go and protect that ideology. It's like, you know, they'll just look, the, oh, fine. Okay, you know, we'll just look the other way until a parent says something, right? And then it takes a whole group of parents, to, you know, to change that sort of thing. But that's just that one guy, mm -hmm. right? There's not a movement that I'm seeing anyway. Like there's not a decisive order of things where things are changing. Now, that being said, it's happening in other parts of the world. I don't know if you know this, but in China, they've recently banned, or sorry, they're, they're, they're limiting the amount of time that kids can play video games now. Mm -hmm. They've banned anything on TV that's like classified, you know, essentially as like effeminate male sort of broadcasting, like sissy boys, like K-pop and stuff like that. And I believe I saw something a few months ago as well that mandated boys to basically have masculinity training, like, you know, to learn how to develop a strong masculine physique and, you know, competency skills and stuff like that. Okay. So China's already won. That last part about China, China has already won. Right. Like we are we are allowing society to, you know, spiral into this position. And I don't think personally that it's a good use of time to fight it because nobody seems to want to fight it. It's it's a better use of time to manage yourself, the people around you and control those things. And if you think, you know, something like an exit or moving somewhere else where you're going to be treated better is a good idea. Consider that as well. You know, that's always mm -hmm. a you know certain uh, solution to the problem, too. Gotcha. All right. Cool, man. Thanks, Thank Nate. You. See you.